Hey, Ron O. Hey, Lou. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, Lucy. Lucy. They're, they're not saying Lou, they're booing. <laughs> uh, well, let's say for a second you're talking to a millennial. Oh. And you interrupt. I wouldn't do that. I know. You, I, I don't recommend it. Let's say they're gaming. That's the cool thing the kids say. Yeah. And you said to them, boy, you know what? I used to play Pong. <laughs> do you think they know what you're talking about? No. Well, we have a list today on our show of things probably only baby boomers will remember, and we're going to share that with you next. Well, baby boomers have seen massive changes in technology, media, and culture over our lifetimes. Defined as the generation born between 1946 and 1964, we grew up before smartphones and the internet ruled almost every aspect of our lives. That almost makes it more fun to recall these nostalgic things that only baby boomers remember. And Ronnie's got the first one, I think. Yes, I do. Tuning in to the Loose, uh, I Love Lucy show. Oh, I never missed it. Oh, me neither. God dang, it was the uh, just the best. So funny. Uh, it was on air from 1951 to 1957. Lucille Ball won the hearts as Lucy Ricardo, a middle-aged housewife prone to hilarious antics and charmingly sticky situations. The sitcom carried on from 57 to 60 with 13 one-hour specials dubbed the Lucille Ball Desi Arnaz Show and later the Lucy Desi Comedy Hour in reruns. Oh my gosh. I mean, I can still see Lucy and Ethel on the factory line conveyor belt yeah with the working chocolates. with chocolates mm -hmm. uh some of the god the, they're still so fresh in my head oh my god great show you know i would venture a guess that harvey corman and tim conway uh watched a lot of the i love lucy show if not were uh, they were instrumental in, in probably writing or producing yeah yeah because i mean that's where that same came brand of comedy yep how about this one ronnie i know you remember this Licking L uh, S N H green stamps. Yes, there were also blue chip stamps. Yes, there were. Yes, and you'd put them in a booklet, and then you'd collect a hundred or so booklets, and you could buy a lamp about that big. I got my very first baseball glove. Oh wow! With blue chip stamps. I think I got a guitar. It was worth about eighteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Deciding what to do with that book of S N H green stamps was a major decision in the household. A new set of dishes for mom. A toy guitar for Lou. The SNH catalog was a treasure trove of options. Man, you used to get them at the gas stations, uh, grocery, grocery store. stores. Yeah. You betcha. Yep. Uh, this next one, oh, this is going back. Admiring Mr. Green Jeans. I love Mr. Green Jeans. Oh, man. Mr. Green Jeans was unquestionably the unsung hero of children's TV show. Captain Kangaroo. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, he was played by Hugh Branham. He was beloved by audiences during the show's nearly 30-year run. That's incredible. Wow. I, I really do. I just remember, uh, and I, I Bunny don't Rabbit. know why. Yeah, yeah, I don't know Mr. why Moose. I remember that show, but I do. I remember, and unquestionably, I could close my eyes and I can picture Captain Kangaroo and Mr. Uh, Green jeans. All I think the of time. I think of Captain Kangaroo every time I see a ping pong ball. <laughs> Driving into the movies. Oh, driving movies are a nostalgic symbol across all generations these days. But only boomers truly remember the experience in its golden age. Anyone remember watching the Pink Panther or the original Parent Trap from their car? Yes, I do. My, my parents would take us to the driving movie all the time. Yep. Uh, and we would sneak in the food. We never went to the, the snack stand. No, no. Uh, I remember the, I think one of the very first movies I saw there was called Thomasina. It was about a cat. It was a Disney movie about a cat. I believe it was Disney. And uh, yeah, not, not very, not all that entertaining, but I did see it from a, a drive-in movie. Uh, next one, man, this is big in my life, huge in my life, taking part in Beatlemania. I had the wig. Uh, I did, I still have a wig. And the lunchbox. I have a, be a Beetle wig. Uh, if you remember the 1960s frenzy known as Beetlemania, 
as a first-hand participant, you are definitely a boomer. Uh, the Beatles catapulted into global superstardom around 1963, and their then unprecedented fan base is still an icon in the era. Now, my very first two albums I bought, two Beatles albums. I believe it. And then just last Tuesday, actually a week ago Tuesday, I saw the movie Yesterday, which is... Uh, it's a world I couldn't live in. It's a world basically without the Beatles music. Oh, yeah, right, right. You told me. Yeah, it's a, it's a crazy premise, but uh, it's a great, it's a really cute movie. The Thrill of Victory the and the Agony of Defeat. Watching ABC's Wide World of Sports was some of the most sensational TV of our time. In one episode, aired on February 5th, 1976, Evil Knievel pulled off one of his famous jumps and I know I was watching it was like the world stopped oh, yeah. when evil was going to do a, a, yeah. a daredevil stunt what about the opening to the wild world sports that guy crashed on oh, that the ski jump yeah. every week yeah consistently he, yeah. he always fell every time he was awful he was Yeah. Uh, next one is witnessing the miracle on ice the Olympic hockey game. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the 2004 Disney movie Miracle gave younger generations a recap, but there was nothing like seeing the Miracle on Ice happen in real time. On February 22nd, 1980, the U.S. hockey team, team did the unthinkable by beating the then untouchable Soviet Union in the semifinals at the 1980 Winter Olympics in Lake Placid. That is, I can still, is it Al Michaels yep. made the call? Do you believe in miracles? Yep. And it really, I just got chills. I did too. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> Stupid Al Michaels. Ooh, that's crazy. Do you remember a time, Ronnie, when you got mail twice a day? <laughs> my grandma, I grew up at my grandma's house. My parents both worked. And yeah, I can remember twice a day. And it was kind of funny because where my grandma lived in, this little town called Milltown in New Jersey. Right in the neighborhood, somebody had turned one of the houses into a bar. Yeah. And so all the men in the neighborhood would all end up at that bar, and so would the mailman. You'd see him in there between stops, you know, after the morning delivery and just before the afternoon delivery. Nice. He'd be in the bar drinking. Um, Perfect. Rheingold, that's what it was. Oh, back yeah. on the East Coast. Yeah. Non alcoholic, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this one dialing a rotary phone. A what? Yeah, a rotary phone. It's, uh, I mean, this is way throwback. Uh, it used to take a lot longer to dial somebody's phone number, especially if it had a lot of nines in it. Yeah. Uh, we'd bet the most people born after the baby boomer, boomer generation have no idea None. how to dial a rotary phone. And you know what it is. I remember uh, our phone number was, uh, that started with a four, but it had an eight, a nine, and a seven, and a nine. You could not call that number in a hurry. Yeah. If you had an emergency, that wasn't happening. Just think if you had to dial 911 now. Do you remember <laughs> when you'd be, as a kid, when you'd be listening to the radio and the disc jockey would come on and say, be caller number seven right now, everybody. Right. And you with that family four-pack of tickets to the California State Fair. That would be challenging. And you'd have to dial. Yeah. Seven, two, six, nine, 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 nine. And, you know, it was it, it, whether you won or not, it was dependent upon how fast you could get in. Right. You couldn't get in fast. No. You never could. You know, the other thing we had on our phone, because my, my mom was very thrifty, we had a party line. Oh, yeah. So you would pick up the phone to make a call. And somebody would be on there. Somebody would be on yeah. talking on it. Yeah, yeah. And you, oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Hang on. I'll up. try later. Yeah. And then give it like five, ten minutes, and you pick it up again. Up. Oh, sorry again. Yeah, could you get out the gab yeah. The phone? Yeah. So party line. It wasn't that long ago, my friends, when you were boarding an airplane. You would sit down before it would take off. And you'd fire up a delicious Marlboro cigarette, <laughs> and you'd be in the no, you'd be in the smoking section, and everyone else would be in the non-smoking section, and of course, to keep the smoke away from the non-smoking section, there was a curtain. Oh, that works. Yeah. Yeah, that and works. It kept like all it. the smoke out of the 
perfect. It works like a chair. Air travel has changed in so many ways, but baby boomers remember when it was common to see people smoking on airplanes. It wasn't until the 1990s that smoking on planes was banned completely. And in restaurants as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, as a smoker, Ronnie, I can tell you something. One of the Indian casinos that we have close by here, yeah. and when I say close by, maybe it's an hour. Um, years ago, I, I, I was signed on to do some live broadcasts from the casino, like every Friday night for this promotion for like four or five weeks. Mm -hmm. So I make the drive up there, and even as a person who smokes, when I would walk into that casino, it's overwhelming. I would choke. Yeah, I literally would choke from the smoke. It's overwhelming. So I can understand how awful that is for a non-smoker. And as a smoker, I can say I, I try to res be respectful, and I try to smoke away from buildings. I think it's 50 feet. I try to go 200 feet. I don't smoke in my own home. I don't smoke in other people's cars. Uh, but back then, you could actually smoke on an airplane, that confined area of an airplane. Yeah. Well, and now uh, the Indian casinos, they have a no smoking section. Oh, yeah. I'm sure that works. What do they have? A curtain? It's, so I know one of them we go to, it's downstairs is the no smoking section uh, right adjacent to all the restaurants. Yeah. So I can appreciate that sure. when you go there to eat. Okay. Next up. Yeah. Eating Swanson TV dinners. Oh, we used to have those on Friday oh, nights when my parents would go out dang. on a date. I, we put them on a TV tray and we sat in front of the TV yeah. and ate them. Yeah, you uh, betcha. Yeah, technically these types of meals are still around today, but only certain people remember when these were invented. The first Swanson brand TV dinners consisted of a Thanksgiving meal of turkey, cornbread bread dressing, frozen peas, and sweet potatoes. And I remember... This picture that they show is not what I remember because ours came in like a tin foil. Yeah, it was tin. Uh, with tin foil covering. Wrapping. It. Yeah. So I think this plastic is that's late eighties. This no. is I'm talking seven early seventies. Do you remember when you needed assistance you would just dial zero and you'd get an operator, get operator. a live person? Yeah. Yep. Well, later generations don't have any idea that you could dial zero and a real person would answer the phone and direct your call. I'd like to place a collect call to area code 916. Yeah. We used to do that, uh, place a person-to-person -person phone call to my aunt in Lodi when we got home, because we went to Lodi every weekend. Uh -huh. When we came home, we would place a person-to-person -person call. Somebody would pick it up. We'd say, is Phyllis there? Nope, she's not here. And then they hang up. Well, right. that was our code that we made at home safely. Oh, yeah. And then you don't get charged for the long distance. Yeah. I uh, remember those days. Yep. Oh, now this one, I do remember this fondly also. Seeing the TV channels sign off at the end of the night. So right around midnight every night, the TV channels, your broadcast is shut off. And I remember one of them, I think it was called High Flight or... Something they had a a movie of a jet taking off and the guy reads a poem. Oh, that, that goes along yeah, with it. yeah. And it's it's a little bit it's slightly religious poem, um, but it was great. And every once in a while, I could stay up long enough to watch that. And one of the channels, I, th I think it may have been the same one. After that high flight video went off, a little bee buzzed around and then went right in the middle, and then snow. Just snow on your TV, broadcasting's done. Hmm. I wonder if that little bee had anything to do with the Sacramento bee. I'm sure it was probably McClatchy had something to do with that, which is a, a big uh, newspaper uh, business in our town. Well, I can remember back in the 60s and 70s, when you were watching a baseball game, They'd show players in the dugout smoking a cigarette while the game was going on. Yeah. Yep. And then when there were three outs, they'd go to commercial and it'd be a commercial for Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. You don't see too much of that anymore. In fact, 
NASCAR used to be called the Winston, Winston Cup. Cup. Yeah. I remember that. Sponsored by cigarettes. Yeah, very vividly I remember that. But as the public became more and more aware of the dangers of smoking, tobacco advertising on billboards was thankfully banned. Uh, now this one, my mom was very famous for this. Eating all kinds of weird jello. I don't like jello. So you make your jello mold, and just when it's starting to set up, you'd put strawberries in it yeah. or grapes or whatever the case may be. And then inside your bite of jello, you have, you know, pineapple, something, strawberries. Yep. This article says in the 60s, people were putting everything in jello, including ham salmon, lamb, cottage cheese, and then more mainstream fruit. Yeah. Wow, uh, and people wonder why I won't eat Jell-O. Ooh, yeah, that's pretty... I haven't seen anybody do that. I, I think it's my wife that makes a pistachio Jell-O from a recipe where it's kind of whipped, and she I can't even remember what she puts in it. She hasn't made it in a long time. We used to take it to a lot of potlucks. It was a big, big... went over really big when we took it out there, but... Jello is so yesterday. You know, they say there's always room for Jello. <laughs> Not with me. All right, what do you say we wrap it up with this one here, Ron? All right. When we were a kid, we wanted to call a store. Not only did Google we have. <laughs> no, Ron. Not only did we have a rotary phone, but I can tell you that you would have to look up the phone number in a phone book. Right. It was yeah. an actual book that came to your house. It's about that thick. Oh, it's, yeah. And it had a billion or so numbers in it. It had white pages and yellow pages. Yellow pages were businesses. Everything was alphabetical. You yeah. had to look it all up. Yep. I got to tell you, man. Pain in the butt. That's one of the things I think has changed so much. And now, some days I'll, I'll go out the door and be heading out to my car to go to work, and somebody's dropped a phone book on my driveway. Right. And I, and I think to myself, what a waste. What the hell am I going to do with that? Right. I don't need that. So it goes right into the recycling can. Well, in case you have a table with one leg that's this much shorter than that's the other. True. Yeah, you could use it for that. That's a good point. Well, I'll tell you what, Ronnie. There's probably a billion other things that baby boomers remember that yeah. kids of today would know nothing about. And we encourage you to give us your suggestions in the comments below. Uh, tell us what you used to use, and it's not even around anymore. Yep or it's just, it's out of date and um, you don't need it. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, and while you're down there, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to our channel? Might as well. You made it this far in the program. Yeah, what the hell? We put out good content a couple of times a week and, and other days, not so much. Yeah, it's no, so so. Always. <laughs> uh, and uh, we'd appreciate it if you'd give us a like and subscribe to our channel. That's gonna do it for this episode. I'm Lou Gallagher. Corvette Ronnie. We'll do this again on the next episode of Men Are So Smart.